Hello! Welcome to my uh, first uh, Canadian English cooking class online. I have been doing cooking classes for 13 years. I usually do them in people's homes. Uh, people's homes, as you heard, I am an Epicure consultant and a director. And I've been yeah with Epicure for 13 years. And I'm uh, really excited to be online today. So we've made the switch to virtual cooking classes. This is new for us. We used to do short recipes for a minute or two, and now we're doing the actual cooking class online. So we go for a few posts in the beginning. People play in them. Uh, last Sunday, I had 100 people participating in my last cooking class. And uh, so it goes crazy sometimes in those posts and those games and everything. So think that, I mean, remember, you can add people in. Hello, Amy. You can add people into the group. They can still participate. Maybe we will reach my record for my last cooking class where I had 100 people participating. Um, I usually don't let them participate after the cooking class and the posts and the games, but I think that at this point, it would be awesome if people are added in. They can play until um, midnight tonight if they'd like to. So add them to the group if they're interested, and they can still go on the post, play on the post, and I will do some draws and give some prizes. So welcome to my cooking classes. I'm looking at the comments at the same time. And so today we'll be talking about good Greek real fast. With Epicure, the way we do cooking classes is usually in someone's home. So today you're in my home. Welcome to my kitchen. And we always use a collection. It's called the Good Food Real Fast Collection. So this is, this is the one we'll be using today. We're doing the Good Greek Real Fast. If you want another one next time, you can check the website. There's six different ones. And they're always the ones that I use for my cooking classes. So hello, Evie. And in each box, and you can buy the item separately, it doesn't make a difference. It's the same price, except that you get these um, recipe cards. You also have a grocery list. And for example, it gives you the prices for each. So I'll just show you an example. This is not what we're making, but if you wanted to make spinach pies, it makes recipes that are uh, cost about $2.50 per portion, per plate. And that's with the ingredients that you have to buy. So they're very... Um, very good for saving money. This, this is like enough to make food for like, like 40 portions or something like that. It's, it says so in the description. I don't know it by heart. So these are the products I'm going to be using today. I don't, I don't use all of them every time. So there's the Greek dressing. I'll talk about that in a while. You can use this jar for like forever. You can make Greek dressing. You can also marinate uh, vegetables or um, there's so many things. I'll share a little bit more about that. So I'm going to put this over here. And then in our Greek collection, we also have the spinach dip. So that's yummy. You make it with, um, there's recipes on the jar. So there's always a couple recipes on the jar. And then on the website, there's thousands of recipes. And then you know what? You can just create stuff if you want to, too. So spinach dip, um, you make it with uh, sour cream, mayonnaise, and um, you put, so it's spinach, sour cream, mayonnaise, and you put it in the oven. And it's so yummy and so much healthier as a snack. Uh, than anything else that you can buy as prepared. Of course, you can make it in other ways too. Most of our products are vegan in themselves, so they don't have any milk products or animal products. So you can add whatever you want. If you want to make them vegan, you can. And if you want to add um, animal products, milk, um, whatever you want to add, you can as well. And then today we're going to be using this one. I'll talk more about that one. I think I forgot to switch my screen to um, reverse so you see the image backwards. And I will post pictures of what I use today. And this is the lemon dilly and I, I will tell you about this because we're using it today. And the last item in my collection here, my good Greek, this is a good Greek real fast. Good Greek real fast. So it's the souvlaki. That's the one I often make in my cooking classes. It's one of my most popular recipes. It takes 15 minutes with this little jar and you can make souvlaki forever. It lasts forever and there's no fillers, so it's real, it's like real, it's food in there. So I hope you're enjoying this and you can hear me well. So how we're going to do this is we're going to follow a recipe. I have a recipe that I chose to share tonight. It's a good Greek real fast. And um, it's a recipe that could take just a few minutes if you make it in the microwave. If you want to do it in the oven, then I'd say about 35 minutes cook time but the prep time is like just a few minutes. So that's what I'm going to share. And um, I also printed it out. You ha you'll have the recipe on the group. It's called crustless Greek style quiche. So I thought that'd be kind of neat, like the Greek, French kind of uh, blend here. 
It's very simple. So I'm going to share substitutes for all the ingredients that I'm telling you about. Um, the only ones I don't know how to switch in a quiche is eggs. If you want to make a quiche that is vegan, then I, I think you'd need a whole other recipe, but everything else can be substituted with um, the kinds of things that you have at home, um, anything that you, you prefer, uh, whatever is less expensive too when you go shopping. But I will be sharing all the substitutes for all the ingredients. So the recipe is on the group. You can also just follow the recipe and use it. Of course, spice blend is not essential to this recipe. I mean, it is for the taste, but you could actually make it with any spice blend you have at home or with just salt and pepper or with the ones that I'm going to suggest. So I'm going to follow this recipe. And this is the kind of thing we do in person's home. So we do a, a cooking class, which first we'd have a, a drink to, together. So it can be a cocktail because it's summer. The summer season starts tomorrow. So usually in the summertime, I do a cocktail at the beginning of my cooking classes. And I do uh, virgin cocktails and I am the expert. <laughs> An awesome, awesome cocktail that you can make at home with, you use, uh, we use like the citrus press, we use little tools, little things that you have at home and then you have a cocktail that is not toxic for you like most of them are. And I'm not talking about the alcohol part because that's your choice to add. I'm talking about everything else that's added in the cocktails, <clears throat> the, the syrup, the different things. It's just not helpful, not useful and just, it's not good for us. So. I have equivalents to that. When it's not summer, like <clears throat> we just came out of the spring, um, the, the, well, not the spring, more winter, end of winter, beginning of spring, I usually had people taste our herbal teas or our teas. We have her teas and herbal teas, like we have a, a, ginger, um, a ginger tea. And the difference with what we have compared to store-bought is that it's not, ra it's not radiated. People do actually, when it comes from another country, it's radiated before it goes into the stores and our products are not. Um, it's also often um, it toxic and if you put anything toxic into hot water, you know, that's not a really good blend. So we have teas and herbal teas that are actually have a, a certain amount of nutrition, a, a quantity of, um, you know, like um, uh, ginger, a certain amount of ginger in each cup. So at the beginning of a cooking class, I always have a drink with my guests. Today I cannot do that with you, but I will post some suggestions. And at the end we usually do a dessert as well, so I can make some suggestions for that. And then in the middle we do a recipe. So we do it together, usually. And I usually try to get people to do it instead of me. <laughs> because the goal is not that you think that I'm good at cooking, because I'm not particularly uh, incredibly good at cooking. I'm a scientist uh, originally, I follow, I follow things, I try things, I do things. and. Um, it's not really my, my greatest passion. I do like to cook, but it's that Epicure makes things simple, easy, quick, and especially inexpensive. We reduced our budget, our family budget, a couple years ago by $150 a week by using Epicure products, and that's something I can elaborate on, a, on, a, on, a, on another time. Because what I want to do today is share a recipe with you. So it's the Crestless Greek Quiche, and that's what we do in the middle of a cooking class. We cook together a 15 minute recipe. So I chose one that actually, if you do it in the oven, the regular oven, it takes 35 minutes to cook. I don't usually do that in a cooking class. You can use the microwave and it takes a couple minutes. So if that's your only alternative to buying a prepared meal or to not eating or to, you know, uh, ordering food, I would prefer that you would do that. So um, our recipe here is very simple. Everything I show you is from Epicure, whether it's the utensils, the recipe, um, the, the containers I'm going to use, the tools, and the spice blends too. So the way this goes is usually I have someone read me the, the list, the instructions, the, the um, recipe. So I'll do that myself because I'm at home alone with my stuff. So what I do is you're supposed to heat up the oven. It could be if you're using the microwave, then you don't need to heat up your, your oven. And then we're going to use spinach. So um, I actually bought frozen spinach this time because the recipe says you can use it. And I want people to know it's better to use frozen or canned food rather than prepared food with chemicals in it. So that is not the best, but it's better than food that has chemicals in it. So I want people to know it's okay to use canned or jars or even better because there's less chemicals in them. We usually, people don't have to put preservatives when it's in a jar. So when you have a choice, or frozen food is okay, but not prepared food. So 
The best thing, I think, and to me, for taste, is fresh spinach. That's what we use at home. But for today, I decided to use frozen spinach so that you know it's okay. It doesn't have to, everything doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to grow a garden of herbs to be able to cook, especially if you want to eat fast. So I actually um, got some spinach and some frozen spinach. I have proof here. <laughs> and that it's really cheap too, you know. And um, so, then we are going to beat four eggs with some milk. So I um, do not drink um, cow's milk at home. We, we are mostly vegan, except the eggs definitely aren't. But we use, um, I have it here. We use the almond milk. Sounds weird, right? Putting almond milk in something that's savory, but it works. As long as you get the unsweetened, see? Because if you get the sweetened or the vanilla one, it might taste a little bit weird with your eggs. I've done it, I don't really care, but maybe check your, if you're gonna get almond milk, check it first. So, we're going to mix four eggs, and it's on the recipe you have on the group, with a one third of a cup of milk. So, how do I measure the milk? What I really like is I use, I use our prep bowls here. It's a little bowl, aren't they cute? So easy to wash. I can just rinse it out or put it in the dishwasher, but we just rinse it out. And they have silicone um, covers. <clears throat> Actually, if you put something even liquid in here and you turn it over, it doesn't fall out. It's really good for leftovers, to put stuff. You can even use, use it in the oven. I mean, it's, it's glass. So we use it to um, measure things because there's actually measurements on it, milliliters and cups. So it's an all-in-one, you know? You don't use as much dishes. So I measured out some, I'm going to measure out a third of cup of milk and put it in with my four eggs. So I prepared the eggs. I didn't think that was very exciting for you to watch, to watch me um, break eggs, right? <laughs> so I put them in my other prep bowl. This is our one liter prep bowl. Very practical too. So I'm going to add my um, milk. I said it was one third of a cup. Whatever kind of milk you have, Probably water would work if you don't have any milk. I mean, it would work anyway. So one third of a cup of milk into my four eggs. And then we're going to add the other ingredients. So the other ingredients of the recipe are very simple. It's spinach. So like I said, very exceptionally, I bought frozen spinach, so you know it's okay. I usually use fresh spinach. And I just, uh, it was frozen, so I just prepared it in my multi-purpose pot. It's also from Epicure, also has measurements in it. If you want to see, so practical. It looks huge, but it's actually as small as the small uh, on the on the stove top. It's act it actually goes on a small circle, so it's very 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 practical to have a 12 liter multi-purpose pot that fits on the small one, so that when you're busy with the other circles there, then you have room for this one. So I'm going to add. It says one package of spinach to my mix. I'm supposed to remove as much water from the spinach. So if it's not fresh. It's frozen, so there's water in it, which is like, you know, not as fun. But like I said, it works. Anything you have, anything that works for you, is perfect. And then they, they're suggesting to add some uh, feta cheese. So I prepared another prep bowl with some feta cheese. And the way I get feta cheese is I get the, the plain. I always get the plain because there's fewer chemicals and it's less toxic. Um, and I always get this, the one that's not cut up into pieces. It's a big square, kind of, big cube, because it has a few, <coughs> sorry, fewer chemicals. Wait a second, I'll just get a sip of water. It's good to be hydrated, right? Very important for our immunity to be hydrated all the time. So feta cheese, they, they said um, in the recipe it says three-fourths of a cup of crumbled feta cheese. So, I measured it with my prep bowl again. <laughs> I already prepared it. Put that in here. And then the last ingredient is grated cheese. So grated cheese, I also measured with this. We put a lot, honestly, you don't have to put cheese in it. I mean, for real, like it's okay without cheese. But if you like cheese, that's fine too. And just so you know, I don't, I don't use low fat stuff because of all the chemicals that are added to it. Really disgusting, the ingredients and no fat stuff. Though, though, if you have a health issue, 
where you really need to cut down on fats for whatever reason it's really important like your doctor told you to and you can't help from eating stuff that's supposed to have it in it like cheese or sour cream then yes go for the low fat I mean it depends on what your needs are and if you like the taste I think they really taste bad so if you like the taste if you enjoy it you don't mind it goes with your your health goals or whatever go for the low fat I just wanted to share why I don't use it and then salt and pepper to taste so we have our uh, sea salt grinder and then I have my um, turmeric and black pepper uh, pepper yeah it's a pepper blend so it's a grinder you just you can choose the size of the the pieces that come out of the grinder and what I like about sea salt is um, it's always better because table salt sometimes has sugar in it plus there's only one nutrient and it kind of comes from a like um, it's not really from I mean it doesn't come directly from nature whereas sea salt has about 82 uh, nutrients in a way it actually has um, um, you know different kinds of nutrients that are actually good for you so I add a little bit of pepper and salt personally I often add that after it's cooked but we're going to do it beforehand so most of any of the ingredients could be switched I mean you don't have to put spinach you don't have to put cheese you don't have to put feta cheese but this recipe is supposed to be like a Greek style recipe so I'm putting pepper in and, and salt and pepper Okay. The special ingredient we haven't put yet is the epicure ingredient. So you could actually put any blend you have. Let's say you have a three onion dip mix or herb and garlic. I mean, anything you like goes in quiche, right? I mean, it just depends on your taste. But what we're suggesting here for a Greek style is lemon dilly. So lemon dilly doesn't taste very strong unless you hate dill, but then you really find that it tastes strong. It's um, to make a dip, so you can make it a chip dip or a vegetable dip with sour cream and mayonnaise or with yogurt. Um, and you can also put it on fish, you can put it on, I mean I made a whole ebook about how you can, there's a hundred ways to use your dip mixes. So um, that actually is only in French right now, I need to translate it so I can put it on the group. So maybe you could remind me to translate it and give it to you a hundred ways to use your dip mixes. I mean that even applies to the ones you have at home already, right? So this is the mix that we're going to put in the recipe. So it's two tablespoons, and I have a, we have these spoons from Epicure, four different measurements. Uh, really simple, you don't need four spoons, like you just have this in your drawer and that's it. And it's pretty, right? I like the color. And it goes in your dishwasher or whatever. So two tablespoons. And then we're just going to whisk it. just going to whisk the recipe. It's a crustless, crust, crustless quiche, so we don't need any breading or, I mean I always ruin those when I try to do those. So I like this recipe because it's so simple. And then we're going to put it in the oven. So if it's the regular oven, it's 35 minutes. But you can see that if I hadn't been explaining the whole thing, do you agree this would take just like 15 minutes? Even the time to get the eggs out, to grate the cheese, the, it would like less than 15 minutes to prepare it. I mean, and if you made it in the microwave, it would take a few minutes to cook. But just exceptionally, today I chose a recipe that if you make it in the regular oven, it takes 35 minutes. That's not usually the type of recipe I choose. I want the ones that are finished in 15 minutes. I really wanted to try this one with you guys. Something new, something different. So you can really adapt it. Like I said, it's very quick. I really, really think this is, it takes less than 15 minutes to prepare. And you make it your way, right? I mean, this is enough for a whole bunch of people. You can see, this is what it looks like. So, of course, that doesn't look very good. Now, one last thing about that recipe is there's a couple ways I can put it in the oven. First, I could use a dish. So, in the oven, you don't need to put a lid on. In the microwave, you would. And then, I could also use what I'm going to use today is this. So this is a steamer. It actually goes in the microwave, the regular oven, a dishwasher, fridge, freezer, everything. And um, it's silicone, it's not plastic, it's pure silicone. Some of your silicone may not be pure and that's not a good thing. And um, it's super simple. Like you can make anything in this, soup, uh, um, just cakes, banana bread, and I'm going to make the quiche in this. And so it's very, very simple. I like it because it's so light, so easy to put away, so easy to wash. 
you just put it away in a drawer and you don't have to worry about cumbersome stuff. So I'm going to make it in this. And I wanted to show you one, one more option. Another option would be this. This is our perfect portion mold. So it's really fun. Like some people won't understand what it's about. And then some people just go crazy about it. Like you can make, um, for one, you can make really small desserts. Like let's say you like cheesecake. You can make a cheesecake in it. Like I always ruin cheesecake crust, but with this you don't. You just put graham cracker, graham cookies at the bottom of, the, of each little spot. You add in the cheesecake mix, because we have a cheesecake mix, and then you have perfect little cheesecake bites. So even if you have five, you're still being really reasonable. You could freeze spaghetti mix, uh, sauce, your own homemade spaghetti sauce in it. It's good for like, people who have a baby, to make baby food, pureed food. Um, it's really practical for so many things. You could put it in the freezer, you could put it in the oven. And so I can make the quiche in this if I wanted to. So I'm doing this cooking class again tomorrow and I'm planning on trying it in, in this. So I'll let you know, I'll post a picture. So for now, <clears throat> I'm doing it in the steamer. So I'm just going to put it in here. And I'm going to put, cook it for 35 minutes in the oven. Of course, I'm not going to ask you to hang around for 35 minutes. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in the oven and I'm going to take it out in 35 minutes and post a picture and also a taste test, okay? So, I have a few things I want to share with you. That's the recipe. It really, it just, I don't know how much time we've taken, but I mean, you usually don't have to explain everything, right? I mean, this is like less than 50 minutes if you're not explaining. And Epicure is about basic recipes, we're not about like really exotic, complicated, but you can add to it. Like you can use the spice blends whatever way you want. If you want something that's more um, exotic, special, complex, then you can make it that way. There's a whole bunch of recipes on the website. Epicure is about making things simple, quick, and specially, specially healthy. No uh, chemicals or toxins in it. So a couple things I wanted to share at the end of this cooking demo, and um, I'll, then I'll check maybe the comments to see if I can, can say, to see if I can, um, <laughs> I can't see the comments at the same time. Oh, I forgot to say, my computer was having so much trouble earlier. Like usually the posts that I do at the beginning are not so, like, it just wasn't working. Usually that would have been done in 15 minutes, the posts, the games and everything, and my computer was not collaborating. So I'm sorry about that. And right now I can't see all the comments, so I'll have to come back to that sometime. So I wanted to share about eggs. We have this to make eggs. People can make it in the microwave or the, or the oven. It takes just a couple minutes. You don't have to watch it. It's not like on the stove top, you have to add oil and everything. Well, you don't have to add any oil or anything in this. It's, it's like an egg o maker, <laughs> really fast, really quick. It's an omelet maker kind of thing. Um, I also wanted to share, since we're in the Greek recipe um, section, about our, <coughs> Oh, I forgot something. I just have to open my drawer here. We have a new kitchen, renovated and everything, so everything is so practical and we're in close. So we have this to make salad dressing. Of course, if you have your own, that's fine. And then we have, um, I can't remember the word of the, what that's called in English. Um, funnel, a funnel, like a sales funnel. <laughs> but it's a regular funnel, a silicone as well. It's really practical when you need to pour liquid or oil from one jar to another, like olive oil. But this is to make salad dressing. So you actually put your, your, your oil, your vinegar in here, or anything else you want to add to your salad dressing. And then you just add two tablespoons or a tablespoon, depending on the amount, of the dressing. And this jar lasts forever. And then this lasts maybe uh, two weeks in the fridge. So, I mean, ours doesn't last that long because we eat it. But it's so much less waste and less money and practical compared to what anybody could buy at the store. So that's one thing is the dressing mix. <clears throat> and the other thing I wanted to show you, I had it out, where is it? Okay, so another recipe I do for the Greek recipe, we often do this thing called uh, Greek salad on a stick. I think that's what I had originally planned for this cooking class and I changed my mind because I do it so often. We cut up cucumbers, tomatoes, feta cheese, um, olives, anything like it could be pepper, I got out some pepper, I forgot to show it. Um, and then you dice it, and then you can use either like just um, kind of like, they're bamboo sticks, they're kind of like to make brush, uh, oh, what's the word, like 
for grilling and everything you can make like a Greek salad on a stick and then you would pour the vinaigrette on that and I love doing that cooking class and um, even online it's a cooking class that kids love to do you can keep them busy so long by making them make a salad on a stick can you imagine how long kids can stay busy with that awesome tip fun and then they eat the vegetables because they're so excited about having salad on a stick but I won't have that's not what I'm doing today it's not the recipe for today it was the quiche that's in the oven right now so what I'm going to show you though is, and it's funny to watch me with a cucumber, right? I know that always gets people laughing. And um, so the quiche is in the oven. I won't keep you for 35 more minutes, just a few more minutes. I wanted to show you the spiralizer, which is actually not the real name of this item, but I call it that way. And you can make um, zucchini spaghetti with it. It makes spirals, and um, ribbons, I mean, and spaghetti with vegetables. So you can use carrots, cucumbers, zucchini, beets, there's a whole bunch of things you can use. On one side, it makes a spaghetti type of a spiral. On the other side, it makes ribbons. So you could actually make salads of that. Like it's really pretty and anybody can do it. And it's so small compared to like a slicer. This really replaces it. It's two, two kinds of slicing, but it replaces a slicer. So I'm just going to show a little bit of what happens. So I call it, it's like a, a pencil um, sharpener, yeah. So you see that it comes, starts coming out. And I did not cut the end of my cucumber, but I could have. So, so you see how it's coming out? Now it's going to fall on the floor because I'm not well prepared here, but I don't want to waste food, so I'll catch it. So I stopped, but um, you could continue and they would be longer. I just wanted to show you the result. And like I said, I'm a scientist. I don't do things that look very pretty. They're tasty, they're fun, but look what I can make. So if you're better at me that things that are aesthetic, you can make it even prettier. So you can put that on a salad. You could put that, um, yeah, in a Greek salad. Not a Greek salad on a stick, though. It won't work for that. And then I have to show you the other side. So those are more the spaghetti kinds. And this is more the, the ribbon kind. So you see? It's more a ribbon. So I'm just going to continue that. Imagine carrots or beets or zucchini. People love doing this at cooking classes. So. Like I said, it's not very pretty. I just do it really quick because I'm not really attached to the way it looks. But people who are good at that, they can make some really pretty stuff with a very simple, you know, utensil. So I think that's about what I wanted to show. Oh, one more thing for Ness. I had a question. So how to make hummus? I think that was one of the questions. Uh, easy at home. And you know, that's a question I've had for a long time because we have a hummus mix with Epicure. We also have the urban garlic. I mean, we have the spices, but I don't have a blender at home at the moment. I don't use one. Um, I got rid of so much stuff. I minimized my home. I might get one someday, but I don't have one. I'd like a small one to make shakes or something, but not like a big deal. I got rid of all the machines in my home almost. So I was like, well, I don't really know the answer because I don't really make hummus so much anymore because I thought it took a blender. Well, would you know that I found a recipe and I'll post it. And the way this woman makes it, she uses, um, what is the name of this? It's a meat. Um, thingy? I can't remember what it's called. I can never remember the name of this thing, but it's awesome. People love it. It looks huge, but it's really small. You can make guacamole with, you know, it's just a masher. It's really, it's really, really easy to wash, easy to hold. All of our stuff is easy to uh, manage, even for people who have pain in their, you know, in their joints and whatever, even if you don't. So this is like a meat masher, potato masher, but you can actually make hummus. So you can use canned chickpeas. Um, you could also cook them. I find that cooked chickpeas are harder to succeed at cooking than um, other, other. We, we cook a lot at home and that's one that we don't usually cook that much. So you can buy canned chickpeas or cook them and then you mash them with this. Of course, you're not going to have something that looks like this, which is my favorite one when I do buy. If I do buy store-bought, if I'm traveling, I bought it today just to show you. I, I get the baba ganoush. We actually used to have a, a, a blend for that. So you are not going to make hummus that looks like this. Because this was made with a blender and it had some chemicals in it. So you're not going to be able to reproduce this. So if you want to make easy hummus at home, the answer that I have for you is it's possible. You can use our urban garlic blend. We have other blends that are made for hummus and mash it with the with the uh, masher you could add tahini if you have some although that's expensive and you could add um not that there's anything wrong with it but if you want something that's to save money and you can add salt and pepper some oil 
and it would actually be really good. I mean, with chips or with nachos, with vegetables, with anything, it would be really yummy, but it will not resemble the store-bought. That's just the thing. We get used to stuff and then we can't um, find exactly the same thing without the chemicals or without the texture. It's trying to find something that we really, really, really enjoy, but that will replace that food that's not so good for us. So that really goes over everything I wanted to share. I wanted to let you know that the new catalog, the summer catalog, is coming out tomorrow. So the, the, you can still order today, so anything you want to order from this season, it's important to order it now, before tonight at, uh, at, at midnight, midnight Pacific, so three in the morning, but don't stay up until three in the morning to order with me. And um, I'll post the link to order tonight if you want to. You can also you know, contact me. And the only item for summer that you can already order now is this, this booklet. I have it in French because I earned it as a leader and they sent it to me in French. It's a collection called Summer Strong. It's a collection of uh, special products and recipes to help you keep your, your recipes, um, your, meals, your meals balanced. There's also exercises you can do. It's like a, it's a special, um, it's a special concept about health and um, energy and staying balanced. So people use it to lose weight. They use it to uh, have energy to plan their meals because there's um, recipes in there. And also, of course, you can't maybe you can't read it because it's in French, but you could practice. There's um, what is it called? Um, grocery list. Grocery list. You know, people who like to have recipes for it's for four weeks, I think. It's recipes for a number of weeks. I think it's four weeks. And anyway, you can re if, even if it's for less, you can repeat it. So it's a number of recipes with the grocery list and everything. And you can substitute with what you have at home. That's what I usually do. So that's what I wanted to share. I think that's about it. So what we did today was the Good Food Real Fast collection. And I'll be on the group for questions. And sorry about it being so long at the beginning. Usually the posts are a little bit more, a little bit smoother. And um, it will stay on the group. So anybody who joins the group will be able to watch the posts participate in the game, uh, we part of the draw, and they can also watch the video because it's on the group. And then uh, my future cooking classes, I will be doing some in May and I will post the links and the information. So if you have any questions, I'll be back later to check. I do have another cooking class tonight in French in, in about two hours, so I might be back right away to answer questions, might be back a little bit later, but do post, uh, ask questions, invite people to the group, that want to be on there. And um, I really am excited to have shared this uh, moment with you, the first couple of people who are watching my um, first English Canadian uh, cooking class, cooking demo, cook along. I like that concept of cook along. Next time I will make sure that you have the recipe list, the product list, at least two or three weeks ahead of time so you can order if you want to um, take part in making it with me at the same time. So thank you very much, uh, stay safe, and take care and thank you a lot for being here with me today.